Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got a review on the DDPi Mix 3 dash camera. Now, DDPi did provide this to me at no cost for review, so I'd like to thank them for allowing me to uh, review this new camera. Now, some of you may know DDPi. Uh, my YouTube logo or uh, avatar is actually a DDPi Mini 2 camera, I believe. Pretty sure it was the Mini 2. It's one of the Mini models. They had a Mini 3 model, uh, which didn't seem to be as popular, and it had built-in memory, which was sort of strange, so there's no micro SD card slot. And that's how this camera is also. Now this one's different though, it doesn't have the cylinder design that the Mini cameras had that looks sort of like Blackview cameras. This one looks more like a traditional camera. So here's some um, quick guide. Now, I did really like the mini camera because it, it didn't have the best video quality, but it was really cheap and it had Wi-Fi and it had a very, very well developed uh, smartphone app. A lot of cameras nowadays, even cheap ones, will have smartphone apps, but a lot of times they're not that great, where the DDPi one felt very well developed. So here is the camera. As I said, it looks like a traditional camera. Feels very similar to like the Anchor um, C2. Yeah, the Anchor C2 or the Anchor C1 or maybe the SJ Cam. It is plastic. It is really light. So it doesn't feel like it's super high end, but it doesn't feel cheap either. So. You'll see it does use some sort of slot connector. Not sure if that's just like a lock button, but looks like it's going to be a touch screen. Let's see what else is in here. I did actually open this up and look through it, but I haven't taken anything out and used it. Here's a little cable tool. This is to help uh, to get your cable up in your headboard or behind trim. You could use this to pull plastic trim out of your car. So it's nice that a lot of companies include those now. Looks like just some extra adhesives. We got a USB cable. This uses micro USB. The rubber band holding it. Here is the power adapter. So it looks like we got one amp up there and 2.1 amps down here. So I'm guessing um, <clears throat> someone mentioned recently about cameras with these dual port chargers. Uh, most of the time you should be able to charge the camera off the one amp and charge your phone off the 2.1 amps so you can charge your phone quicker. So pretty standard or pretty typical. Nothing in there other than a little oxygen pouch thing. And here is the mount. So you don't get a suction cup mount. You only get this adhesive mount. Oops. So it goes in one way only. So I do prefer adhesive mounts. I sort of wish, considering this is like a camera, digital camera cell one, I sort of wish it came with an uh, suction cup mount also. Now let's take a look at this. There you can see it is a black adhesive, so I always check for that because I do not like when cameras come with uh, gray adhesives. So like their previous cameras, there is a Wi-Fi app for both Android and iOS, so I will go through that also in this review. So I was about to put a memory card in, and then like I said earlier, I uh, remembered that it has 32 gigabytes built in. Now, off the top of my head, I can't remember if there's larger options, so I'll put a subtitle down below if there are different options. 
So let's go ahead and turn this on. Hello, Ding Ding Pie. <laughs> okay, so I guess it's Ding Ding Pie as opposed to DD Pie. Now, picture might not show up that great. Let's see if I can. Just the exposure a little. So, we got Turn off audio recording. mute on and off, and as you can hear, there are audio alerts. Turn on audio recording. Got a snapshot button. Um, this is if you want to view your files, and we got settings. So now there's not too many options for the menu. Uh, says you can download the app with this, with the uh, pattern or QR code. You can turn the Wi-Fi on or off. You can turn the loudspeaker volume to different settings. You got a microphone on or off, parking monitor, which I will touch on later. Now I actually wanted to talk about the parking mode now while recording this clip I accidentally explained it wrong but it's not too complicated it's just a little different than most cameras so you do need an always on connection either a 12 volt port that's always on or a hardwiring kit connected to a fuse that's always on and the way it works is after it senses no movement for 15 minutes it triggers the parking mode and then you can have a 1 hour, 6 hour, 24 hour time limit or no time limit at all and during that uh, limited amount of time you can either record in time-lapse mode with one frame per second or just have it recording normal clips and then if it ever senses an impact it will uh, switch back to normal recording it'll sort of wake up and then uh, it'll record for 15 minutes as you can see here with either time-lapse or normal recording and then it'll go back to the time limit uh, with the time lapse or normal recording depending on which one you chose. Now with this always on connection if you turn parking mode off it'll still record for 15 minutes. So now the benefit of this is I would recommend using the time lapse because you don't want to fill your memory card up especially if you have something like a 24 hour time limit. You don't want to fill up your memory card with regular footage every time you're parked at work for eight hours so I would recommend the time-lapse feature and then when it senses an impact it'll trigger a normal recording but even though it doesn't have buffered recording since you have the uh, time-lapse footage during that portion leading up to it you're you're still capturing the footage leading up to it so this is a nice workaround to something like the more high-end cameras like Blackview or Thinkware by still having the time-lapse as opposed to the buffered uh, pre-buffered recording. So now it is uh, touch-based buttons on the side here. Now the 60 second of idle, I wasn't sure what that was quite at first, but basically after 60 seconds of just sitting or recording, it will. you can either leave the recording screen on show the time or you can have the screen turn off so I set it to turn the screen off after 60 seconds you got a format and then an about screen and that's it so it's pretty limited uh, I'll get uh, give you a look at the Wi-Fi app and now actually before we get to the Wi-Fi app I wanted to get to the footage because this is something that obviously most people are going to care about the most now this camera doesn't offer anything super special like 1440p or 4K footage, but the 1080p footage they have here is decent. Uh, the camera currently is $80 on Amazon, and for the price of a camera with a pretty well-developed uh, smartphone app and with this image sensor, I thought the footage was decent. The colors are very vivid. Now, I don't necessarily think the colors are 100% accurate, but I do like the appearance of the color. And the 1080p is decent. Now, there's definitely times 
where license plates are a little hard to read. The bitrate is only about 10 megabits per second. Now, I did actually watch some other people's reviews on YouTube because I was having some issues with some stuff for a while that I did resolve, but I looked up to see if anyone else was having these issues, and so one guy who thought the video quality was really good and he could always see license plates, but he also had, was it, or he was also in Europe, and I feel like in Europe, license plates are much easier to read than in the United States. So that definitely plays a factor. From what I've seen, it does capture license plates in Europe very well, but there are definitely instances here where when a car was driving by me pretty fast, I couldn't make out the license plate as well as I hoped. You can definitely sometimes, but it's really hit or miss. Overall, I'd say for the price of this camera and the features it has, it's adequate. It's not bad, but it's not uh, out of this world or anything either. Now with the night quality, I also thought it was pretty good. The colors are pretty good. Uh, the bit rate again is pretty low, but that was a problem that I sort of complained about in my review for the other DDPi, the Mini 2 I believe it was that I reviewed. And so yeah, I, I did complain a little bit that the video quality was okay, but the bit rate was a little too low. So it, in fast motion, it starts to look pixelated. And I would say that is the biggest problem with this camera's video quality again. It uses the Sony IMX307, which is a Sony Starvis image sensor. But I just feel like even though it's got this great Sony Starvis image sensor, it's being limited by the lower 10 megabit per second bit rate. So again, it's it's adequate. The night quality is pretty good. It, you know, the dark spots are pretty bright uh, relative to other cameras in this price range. I'd say it's uh, at least average, if not better than average. It's really hard to say unless you do a direct comparison. So now let's take a look at the Wi-Fi app. Now with the Wi-Fi app, like I mentioned in my previous DDPi review, I do think the Wi-Fi app is pretty well developed. You can see here you can share your videos to this DDPi uh, social network. Um, you can share your video files to other social media, of course, directly from this app. Now there's also going to be different settings through the app that aren't accessible on the camera. So if you are against using a smartphone app, this camera is definitely not for you because some of the very important features such as res resolution and the parking mode options are only accessible through the app, like the battery protection time limit uh, function. So again, you, you're going to need the app. So if you don't want a camera with a uh, smartphone app and don't want to use a smartphone app, then this definitely is not the camera for you because at this point it's pretty much required. But if you don't mind using the smartphone app, then uh, you know it's pretty, like I said, it's pretty well developed. It seems very professionally made and uh, it seems to work just fine. At first I did have some issues. I was downloading some clips and then they vanished. I'm not sure what happened. I, I think I might have just deleted them by myself on accident because it seems like sometimes the thumbnails in your downloaded file list aren't accurate. And I think I might have just erased them because I thought that they were the wrong clips. So anyways, to download clips, this is the one part I don't really like a whole lot with the app. You can't just select files and start transferring them to your phone. Now when you first load it up, you're going to be greeted with a live feed and then also you can scroll back through the entire timeline of all of the files that you've recorded. Now from here you can choose to download a clip at that portion you're at. So here, for example, example you'll see that it'll load this current clip and this is over Wi-Fi, so it's not instant, but it'll show the clip that I was on on the timeline, and then I can start recording from here if I want. Now to do that, you hit that button on the left side, or you can choose to look at a whole list like this of all the files in order, but you can't just select one and download them. Like I've tried holding on the icons and it doesn't let me download them just like that. 
That's how pretty much every other dash cam app works. And this one, you do have to load up the file, and then here you'll see this is the download portion where it'll start downloading while you're watching, too. It's sort of weird, and the minimum download length is five seconds, I believe. So after five seconds, you can save that five seconds, or you can continue through the entire clip and download the whole minute-long segment. There you can see I only downloaded six seconds there. But I don't really like this that much. It's clunky to me. I would prefer to just be able to download the clips like any other dash cam app. But again, the unique part about this is you can trim your clips easier this way, at least uh, as long as it starts at a part you want. But anyways, you can connect the camera to a PC and it'll you know give you a file list and then you can just watch all the files uh, and save the ones you want. That's the way I would prefer. So that's my m main complaint about it. I know I get what DDPi is trying to do here. I'm just not particularly a fan of it. But I, I will say I am biased. When I uh, save clips, most of the time I'm trying to save 10 or more clips at a time. Most people aren't going to be doing that. You're just going to be saving one likely because you were in an accident. So if you just need to save one clip, it's it's no big deal. But from my personal experience, trying to save multiple clips or a high number of clips, it does start to make it very tedious. Now one other complaint I have, which is sort of minor but really annoying, is when the screen shuts off, it's not actually off, it's just a black screen. So you continuously have this black screen that's on and it's not like it's a fancy OLED where it's really dark. It's noticeably bright as you can see here in this clip. I wish when the screen turned off when it was idle it actually turned completely off not just a dark but bright screen like this. So in conclusion I got mixed feelings about this camera. Now I do like the build quality of the camera. I, I do like the the fact that it comes with a permanent adhesive mount, but I wish it also came with a second mount with a suction cup in case you want to move it to another car easily. Uh, I, like I said, I had a major issue with how the way files are downloaded through the app. I'm just not a fan of it when I need to download multiple files at once. But you can, you know, just connect it to your computer if you need. Now they claim that this internal eMMC memory is 10 times longer lasting than a micro SD card. So that could be a benefit if that's true. Um, I know micro SD cards sometimes fail. I've had a few that fail. So uh, for someone, an average consumer that really only needs to save a clip every once in a while, uh, downloading one clip from the app probably isn't going to be an issue for those kind of people. So I don't want people to take it to heart and, and think that it's a terrible thing because I didn't like it that much. I Like I said, I, I have cer special circumstances. But besides that and the weird uh, quirk with the screen actually staying on when it's supposed to be off is, you know, that's that's just a minor complaint. Overall, the, the camera is cool. It's, it's $80. Uh, for what you get, it's pretty decent. There's other cameras around the $80 to $100 price range that come with a Wi-Fi app. Um, but, you know, it, there's such a wide range of products out there. So it's a very highly competitive market. Now, I, I don't want to say this is the best camera or, or an average camera for the $80 price range. It's really hard to say. Another camera I liked recently was the Vava 2K dash camera. I reviewed it just this summer, and at the time it was like $120, but it might be cheaper now. So if you're looking for something with a Wi-Fi app, but without the quirks I mentioned, uh, the Vava dash cameras are pretty cool if you are okay with the weird form factor. Overall, I'd say if you were already interested in this camera, and you are aware of the quirks I mentioned, including the fact that it has a battery instead of a super capacitor, uh, then I'd say go for it. It's it's not a bad camera. It's just definitely different. 
And DDPy, from my, my experience with the Mini, seems to strive towards being a little unique and really hitting that social media aspect as opposed to uh, making a dash camera like every other camera where you just download entire five minute clips or three minute clips, which like I said, I actually prefer, but uh, I think they, they are going down this unique path and it could be for some people, maybe not other people. So I hope this review is helpful. Uh, if you like this review or my other reviews, I always appreciate it if you hit like and subscribe. And of course, I'll provide links to where you can purchase this. Uh, I do uh, use affiliate links so they help support my channel. A lot of dash cameras I do buy, like I just recently dropped $250 on the two recent Anchor dash cameras, so those reviews are coming soon. So again, your purchases through my affiliate links help me out, and of course I appreciate all the views and comments down below. So as usual, drive safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.